I'm Adam Luffman from Urethane Foam Consultants, and we'll be giving you a walkthrough of how to do a density test on a medium density uh, spray polyurethane foam insulation. Uh, as a field applied product, this spray foam has a requirement that the installers have to verify the density of the materials installed in the field. Uh, when the material is tested, it's tested to a minimum density and spray foam materials in the field need to be at that density or above and how you determine that is through a site density test. Um, what you're going to do is start with a cured sample of material. You don't want to use anything that's just been sprayed or is too hot. Um, you want to make sure you have uh, approximately two inches of thickness to work with. Um, a density sample can't have pass lines or knit lines or skins. So the sample that you're working with should have clear material through the core. Once you've selected the material, uh, you do want to pick it from a place representative of where you're spraying. If you're spraying a warm house on wood or lumber walls, uh, spraying onto a cold concrete floor isn't going to give you the same results. So if you're spraying onto the walls, cut it out, uh, get a sample about that size, and that'll give you something to work with. So you do need a sharp utility knife and a section of foam like that. So what we're going to do is cut down a sample to about that size where it's going to weigh between 5.5 and 10 grams. The finished sample also needs to fit within the graduated cylinder. So if it's too short and too wide, it'll get stuck. So what I like to do is cut them nice and long, cut the length down until you're under the 10 grams. So in this case, I've got my sample. We're trying not to press and distort the material that we're working with. So we're cutting off the back skin. We have no skins on the sides, top or bottom, but we do have the skin on the face. So now we've got our sample, that's going to be quite a bit over 10 grams. I'm going to cut the shape down. So I'm confident it fits in the graduated cylinder. So if you use the length of your knife uh, handle as a guide, if you cut it to approximately that length, five, six inches, then uh, we're going to be in the ballpark of the right sample weight. It's still looking a little large, so I'm just trimming it down. We take our graduated cylinder. This one's filled to 700 milliliters of volume. I'm going to make sure the sample fits into it, so I know it's not going to get stuck. We're going to use the scale turn it on. It should register 0.0, .0 on the display. If that doesn't, you just press the tear button to reset. And then we're going to take our sample, place it on there. And we're seeing that we have a sample weight of 9.28. This is a field test, not a, a laboratory test. So we're, it may fluctuate a bit, but that's okay. So on our work records, we're recording our sample weight of 9.2 grams on the density test section. Um, it gives us an area to record the weight. So that's at 9.2 grams, and it's also a dry weight. If you submerge it in the water, it won't be valid. So once we have our weight of 9.2 grams, we know our starting volume is 700. I'm just gonna pierce that with my knife, and then we're gonna drop this under the level of the water, and then I'm at 800, 900. Each uh, gradient represents 10 milliliters, so I'm at 910, 920, and I'm approximating that to be 925 milliliters. So if our starting volume was 700, we've gone to 925 milliliters with the addition of the sample, then we know the volumetric displacement of the sample is 225 milliliters. So the volume of just that is 225. Uh, on our form, it gives us an area to complete the calculation. 
where we take our initial dry weight of 9.2 grams. So we're taking our initial weight of 9.2 grams, dividing by 225. We're multiplying by 62.4 to give us a density of 2.55. Now in this case, our required field density for the product is 2.1 pounds per cubic foot or above. At 2.55 pounds, that is an average density we would see for material sprayed on a cold morning without the equipment at full temperature. If you were to spray all day long at 2.5 or 2.6 pounds, uh, you'd certainly have strong foam, but you also wouldn't be making any money. So the value in doing this test is as everything comes up to temperature and as your ambient conditions change, you want to redo the density test and hopefully see that density closer to 2.3, 2.2 or 2.1 because that'll be the sweet spot where you're making money. If you're continuing to spray all day at 2.5, you would want to reach out to your chemical supplier to see if there's a change you could make to your equipment settings. Uh, your, even your material storage could affect that. Uh, and once you've determined your final density, you do need to indicate on your sheet whether it's above the minimum requirement. Again, at 2.1, uh, we can indicate that yes, there, it is above our minimum requirements, the standard doesn't specify a maximum. So you could spray all day long at 2.6, you're gonna have very strong foam. Um, you're just not gonna be making much money off it.